As someone who grew up as an only child, who spent a lot of time alone, uh, I realized that I could choose to be alone or I could choose to be with myself. One is a one-way street and the other is a collaboration. And I'm going to expand on that because I recognize that when I say I am with myself, that's a collaboration. That's understanding that there are two facets to this. There's like the soul self and the human self. And so now I get to be, you know, Eckhart Tolle talks about that a lot, right? And he's like, nice. I hate myself. And that was his realization of that statement got him from I hate myself to I love myself because he realized that the myself could shift in relation to the I. And the I could then love himself, like you know, I can love myself. And that could be a, a transformation. Yeah. Um, and so the reason I'm bringing all this up is because perfectionism to me is a one-way street where when we look at something like preference, it becomes a collaboration, which is a lot more in alignment with the universal structure, which is always in collaboration. Uh, everything is impacted by something or all things to a, to a degree, right? And that's, you can dive into the quantum sciences of that one. I, that's out of my, out of my realm. Observer effect, all of these things that go into it. So if anybody's interested in quantum entanglement, yes, um, there's lots of different touch points in quantum sciences that mm -hmm. really, when applied not only to quanta and energy, mm -hmm. but to consciousness itself, starts to open up a whole like, whoa but yeah different conversation different deep dive yeah so that's why i think to a degree it's important to point this out and prior to this conversation i not really ever thought about it um is that when we are viewing it from perspective from perfection it's it is it's closed off it's one way and there's there's nothing can be added to it as you were saying that third part right yeah so that's that's not the way of the universal structure at least that's an illusion that there is because a lot of people are closed off one way and feel like no one can add to it. And it's not just people, there's ideologies around it and there's, you know, where it's like, this is, this is the way, you know, no pun intended to the Mandalorians, but. Yeah, the way. <laughs> Perfection for me also creates limitations in our human connection, our collective consciousness, right? Because when any one of us create parameters, limiting beliefs around what is perfect, like because we're all, think of it like mushrooms, right? We're all connected in some way and sending information back and forth, whether we're aware of it or not. And so if I bring in this, oh, it's only perfect when, then suddenly I'm sharing that limiting belief with the whole of human consciousness because I've placed that limitation. Now, we all know that our negative brain bias loves to just grab onto things, and then the inner critic grabs onto that negative brain bias. So either you, people begin to step up and attempt to reach those unrealistic standards of perfect that I've created, even if it's only in my own circle. And then they start sharing that in their circles and their circles. And it starts to spread like wildfire. And we've got these limiting beliefs around what is perfect. And if my inner critic is telling me, but you're not perfect, you're not going to measure up to that. Your collective now says, this is the ideal of perfect, but you're not in alignment with that. So you're broken. You're not worthy of even going for that versus if we did all come at it from this awareness that perfect is an illusion, but preference is very real. Mm -hmm. It opens the gateway to, okay, this is my preference. That's your preference. This is their preference and this is their preference. And so, wow, there are multiple ways to experience this reality in this world. And I don't have to fit into a mold anymore. So shoop, you just took away your ego and your inner critic's fuel. Just like that. Gone. I love that. That's so powerful. I mean, if, if someone said to us, you're not perfect, or if we said it to ourselves, you know, or, or sorry, someone, yeah, you're not perfect, or I'm not perfect. 
Um, either way. Either way. Two way street. <laughs> either two way street. Um, what an opportunity to reframe. You know, instead of it being a negative, like that's a bad thing. Like I'm, I'm, not, I'm not perfect. I shouldn't even, I shouldn't even go f- go for this. Well, if you started saying, "Well, I'm not perfect," so that means I'm not closed off. That means I'm not stagnant. You know, that means that I am actually in alignment with the universe that's growing and expanding. And a willing contributor. And a willing contributor. Beautiful, a beautiful yeah. contribution. Thank Willingly. You. <laughs> I will receive that. <laughs> um, talk about reframing. So immediately, like you just said, that's how we uh, pull the rug from under the inner critic, mm-hmm. right? Because that's what it's going to be feeding on those, those illusions that you're talking about. And so if we want to fuel the inner champion then, then we say, yeah, you're right. I am not perfect because I am open and expansive and in collaboration which puts me in the exact space to be the greatest version of the grandest vision of who I am through limitless potential. 